Oh, is it noon on the day? Oh, great. Take it away. Take it away. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Desi Brown, and my show is called All About the Things. Um, I first want to thank my committee, uh, Siggy, Eli, um, Charles, and JKB. They have been phenomenal. And I want to thank uh, Tony in the theater costume shop. He has been absolutely great and had um, something to do with where my work went. Of course, I have to thank my tribe, the five. These are all of my children on Christmas. They're all enthused. We're all happy to be together. Um, but really, they have endured so much. I was, I've been a mother since the age of 17, so my oldest one has been through life with me, and it's been absolutely phenomenal. And without him and the rest of them, I, haven't, I would not be grounded like I am. So real huge thanks to them, especially the little ones. Um, they had to give up their mom for three years for me to come back to school. I was like gone a lot, so I really do appreciate them very much. So I'm going to dive right into it. Um, the first work that I'm going to talk about is um, a piece that I did in an installation class, uh, Let Me In. It's about a woman that's a non-traditional student. Um, she really wants to get back into school. She wants to be here. She's clinging on the fence like, let me stay here. She wa uh, wants to break through all the barriers that she has sitting in her way, being a single mother, um, being a woman of color, being all of these things. So um, a lot of what she has on is uh, materials that um, I represent throughout my, all of my work. Um, first, her head. Oh, I'll just keep going. I'm sorry. I first made a mold for her arms um, to slip cast, which is a liquid, um, liquid clay. And then I made her head out of earthenware. And this is me piecing her body. So somebody was nice enough to donate their body for me to plaster. So I got to plaster her body. And this is where I'm trying to get it all together to see what it's going to look like. And this is still in process, but the colors that I've chose. Um, orange will appear constantly throughout my work. And a big reason why I use orange is when I finally became uh, financially independent at a point in my life, I bought myself a dresser at a garage sale, and it's orange. And it just, for me, it says that I'm independent, I'm powerful, I can do this on my own. So that's a big reason why I use the color orange. Um, of course, I'm embellishing the nipples. I'm a mother. I can feed my children. My body is amazing. It can do so many things. And the head is in black and white, and the flowers are from um, a tree in Wyoming. I'm from Wyoming. And I always use black and white in my ceramics because I am black and white, biracial. I braised the skirt, um, which is two metals joined by a flux. So I braised the skirt, wrapped it with um, nylon, and then I used hair to weave in and out. Um, hair in my household is a big thing. Um, I was getting the gallery ready and after I had to go do hair for six hours before we went to school. So six hours to do, well, three or four of the hours is just one head. So that's Jada. She's the diva. You saw her at the beginning. Andy Warhol. Um, I, <laughs> we look just alike. So I wanted um, to represent myself also as a father. And Andy Warhol um, has this amazing wig, and it looked a lot like mine. Well, my hair, but it looked just like Andy's. So, and thank you, Janelle Strauss, for all of your documentation. She's been absolutely wonderful. I wanted to screen print myself, and I really wanted the background to be dark and my face to come through. Um, also, I wanted to do it on spandex. I work out all the time, and so I wanted it to be on this material. During 
quarantine, I had the luxury of having all of my children. The, my older kids um, lived with me at the time, and so did my younger kids, and I live in a two-bedroom apartment. So there was a lot of us in one tiny space. I mean, a two-bedroom apartment. It was crowded. But we still had to have organization because there's so many of us. So I wanted to represent my household in this organized chaos and wanted to use all the materials that you can find in your home and materials that assemble your, or your, some, uh, your home's assembled with. So I had drain pipes, I have vents, and things that we find in our vents um, is a little, this little LOL doll, you can hardly see it, but that's everywhere. That's what my daughter plays with, and there are these little dolls, and they have these little parts, and they're everywhere. So I want to make sure that I got it in there. And I think she's a little upset that I stole that one, but I was like, it has to go in this piece, Saray. All the pistachios on this piece too, I ate or I was eating while I made this piece. So I wanted to keep keep it going. So I took a sound class while I was here with Fabian. Thank you, Fabian. It was absolutely wonderful. And each track that we did, I made a visual representation of it. So I wanted to make sure um, I had recorded my workout, which was this, the notes of the woman that um, is the instructor of the workout. Her name's Lacey. And these are her notes for that workout. And I wanted to make it look like an equalizer. Um, I had cicadas in my work. And I had me taking my chain off of my children talking. And so that was a representation of them. And then one of them was like, what would I, my um, score look like? Or what would I, one of my tracks look like? And it would be me speaking word, which I don't speak word. But man, it would be great if I did. So that's, that's my face, actually. And um, Jess Peterson at LTL here, and I work closely with her. Her dad gave her a picture of a crabapple tree, and so this is the tree of knowledge coming out. I was painting with materials just like my home, so I used bubble wrap for one of my pieces. I was using um, pattern for the top, and then some found materials in my studio. Um, I also wanted to put my initials somewhere in here, but not just to be like, a D and a B right here. So these are my initials. Um, while taking my kids to uh, the daycare one morning, I was going by this field and I was like, geez, it's the middle of winter. What are all these birds doing out in this field? Like it was just tons and tons. And I just stopped and they weren't birds, they were dead sunflowers. So I was like, oh my gosh. So I had to take a picture of this dead sunflower and I wanted to print it on fabric because of course I'm using material for all of my language. And so I put it on fabric and put a five on the board that I had found. And here's one that I painted. I painted this with a little brush and it took a long time, but I projected the image onto a found board and drew it and then painted it painted it. So finding things, uh, walking through campus, Krenner or Mitch Daniels, whatever the building's called now, um, yeah, they're gonna love that. Uh, they were taking some of the items out, gutting some of the uh, floors out and throwing materials away. And I found this, um, it's probably to cover a light fixture. And I was like, I wonder what it would look like if I printed on top of it. And so when I printed on top of it, this is a picture of myself um, at a young age with my curlers in because I attended church all the time. I'm Pentecostal, so if anybody knows anything about Pentecostals, we live for church. Um, so, and I'm looking at the camera as if like you are bothering me. So this piece is called Vanity. Also other grad students giving me things was beautiful too. Shane was like, here's some light bulbs I had. If you can wire them, they're yours. I mean, thanks. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so I, I looked at this foam, because this foam is in our studio. And we, as ceramic artists, use this to protect our pieces when we're working with them. Um, flipping them, if we're painting them or glazing them. 
I'm using this foam. And so I, I loved, loved, loved the pattern, obsessed with pattern. Um, my mom was a seamstress, so I lived in, in um, Joanne fabrics. So I have been exposed to material or fabric my whole life. So I wanted to see what this would look like as a painting. This piece transformed so many different times. Um, so it began like this, and then I was like, oh, yeah, let me um, take that out of there and let's put a border on it. Well, then it looked better without the border and the natural fabric bleeding off of it. And I also wanted to incorporate um, material that I, I had in my studio left over from another project, and I wanted to make a boob out of it. Of course, I'm a reference to motherhood. So, yeah, is that great? <laughs> yeah. The patterns that I found, um, I had to go to different stores. So one pattern I found at Walmart, the other one I found at Meijer, and I wanted to make sure that I put it all together um, to see if I can make this elaborate dress. Like I said, I took Tony's theater costume class. And so in there, we're looking at Elizabethan era, which I'm obsessed with anyway. And I really wanted to make this out of bed foam, out of this material that we don't think to use, but not only that, we don't think of, that of high value. And I wanted to make it so. So I made a wig as well. That was the first project that I made out of um, this foam. And I wanted to make a powder wig, or a wig that you would see um, queen, the queen in, uh, um, oh, what's it called, Bridgerton. Yeah, Charlotte. And it's just like, she has the most elaborate wigs, and they're so beautiful, they're art in their self. So I'm like, I'm gonna make my own. But I also want to represent black women and all these stereotypical things that they think of us. And even though I don't have money, I still have class and I still have status. So I wanted to wear this wig and of course, bless Janelle. I'm like, Janelle, meet me at the grocery store. And she was like, no problem, I'll meet you there. I'm like, great, what are you gonna do? I'm like walking down the aisle like I'm the mom, but I wanted to be a boss mom. So um, I have watermelons in there, I have chicken in there. And um, later on, I'm picking up chitlins, or chitterlings as they call them here, but they're chitlins, um, pig intestines, which is also a reference of when people that were enslaved got the leftovers. So I am literally taking what holds shit and making art out of it. Um, my queen hat. Um, I'm looking at Queen Nefertiti, and I'm also looking at Andy Warhol and his soup labels and I'm making my own crown out of this. And also, if you are familiar with um, Queen Latifah, maybe, yeah, okay. So, beginning works of ceramics that I started, I wanted to make figurative work, but I didn't want it to look exactly like the body. So, I started this, and I, again, black and white, and I started with the patterns. Wanted to start embellishing, um, Ceramics. Hadn't done it, but I felt like that it needed it. Then I wanted to use different, instead of slip, can I spray paint on this? So I did it. And using my kids' necklaces. I'm, I'm sure my daughter was missing that necklace as well. <laughs> um, this piece is Delta Burke. Um, if you guys are familiar with Delta Burke, <laughs> Designing Women, um, my mom reminds me of these women. Always dressed, like always, like I said, she sewed, so she'd always go and get a Vogue uh, pattern, and I mean shoulder pads, we're talking about the 80s, right? So she was just like pumps. She'd come home, and as soon as she'd come in the house, she would just start cooking. And in her, I mean, high heels, nylons, just cooking away, so she just is, uh, always reminds me of the designing women. Um, unfortunately, the bottom didn't make it, but this is how the top ended up. So the shirt reminded me of one of those silk shirts that Delta Burke would probably um, wear in that show. Then I felt, oh, let me really try to make a big butt. Um, like I said, I'm in the gym. I'm working on this, right? 
this is not just work in the studio. This is working on my body outside of the studio. So I'm like, I really want a representation of this, this body. And I had this head and I, I wanted to make sure, I wanted to use some materials that I had in my studio to create this space. I was walking in Michael's and there was um, this uh, ornament for a tree and it was only $4 and I'm like, man, that looks like the hairstyle that's out now. So I just wrapped it around her head. Also using duct tape to paint. Um, I was just trying to, you know, explore. And so I used that at the front and then uh, during this time I did my DNA um, ancestry and I'm Scottish and I'm West African, go figure. And so um, that is the tartan for brown and um, that is a giraffe pattern with my bamboo earrings broken up like bone. Again, wanted to continue with um, making the figure but with a big butt. And I wanted to use this houndstooth pattern um, because my, when my aunt passed away, she's a very important person to me. I don't have too many people in my life, too, much, too many family members in my life. And so um, when I went to her funeral, there was a jacket that I wore and it was at a hound's tooth. And of course the curlers, I'm a church girl. Braided hair, did hair before I went to that funeral as well. I wanted to make something that could hang on the wall. So this is me uh, making it from the back up out of earthenware. I like earthenware too, and I like using earthenware as well as because it's closer to the, my skin tone and I feel that connection to it. So here's it hanging on the wall. And it has a patterns of a pentagon because the pentagon in the United States is your home base, is our home base, it's where our security is, and so I am my kid's security. Um, has nipples with dials on it, a golden vagina, which you'll see throughout my work as well, or vulva, that's more appropriate. Um, just because, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say the other one. Uh, <laughs> we could go further. <laughs> So, um, yeah, because we can house children, we can also feed children. We're very, very, very powerful people, beings. So I wanted to sand cast. I, um, I was on Instagram and a woman was making bowls out of melting aluminum cans down and she was selling these. And so she was just, I mean, she was throwing these cans in this wood fire and I was so amazed and I was like, oh man, I want to do this, I want to cast as well. So um, my friend and I went out in the country and got this can to start making a furnace. So this is the beginning of starting to make a furnace. Um, we had to put the I guess the or installation in there, and then made a torch for it. And then there is the mold, and there's the product of it. And there's a fly. Speaking of flies, <laughs> I have this uh, series of flies, as you can see in the studio. Um, the reason why I wanted to do the fly, fly Baby series is because flies live for so long. They don't live that long. And I wanted to compare it to babies and how they learn within the first four year. Um, it's very short years, very quick. And I'm comparing it to that fly's lifespan. Um, but also how they're so important for the ecosystem, our, our society ecosystem and so are flies. They're so important for us. They have, they pollinate. We wouldn't have chocolate without flies and also that we'd have dead carcasses everywhere or we'd have carcasses, I guess dead is redundant. But so this is my fly baby series. I'm like combining those two thoughts.
So this is the larva, and they have fingers in them and hands in them because society always has their fingers and hands. Oh, you're going to have a girl. Is it going to wear pink? Oh my gosh, you're going to have a boy, blue. So it's constant. Even before you have that child, we're already telling it what it's going to be and what it's going to do. Um, here's the baby coming alive. And I have a weight belt about around this because, of course, I'm lifting weights. <laughs> also, the flower is from DC. That's where a lot of our decisions are being made for us. Here's the emerging fly in progress. Ended up cutting its eyes out and putting speakers in it. There's the wings. This is my nice floor. The wings are made um, out of material and had to make them 3D and painted them, um, used uh, powder pigment and jewels, rhinestones. And there's the back of it. The pattern that is used on the bottom, the black and white pattern, um, I drew, it kind of reminds me of an old stereo. Um, of course, uh, her vagina is there again, or her vulva. And, um, the eyes are actually, there are speakers and it's my kids speaking and that's what um, our kids are internalizing when we're talking to them or when we're saying things to them. They're always taking everything in. Here is um, Cleopatra Tut because everybody kept on saying, oh, her mouth, because the mouth is actually a fly's mouth, close up. but kept on looking like a vagina and also very phallic-y as well. So I was, I was impressed with that without doing that on purpose. <laughs> and there's the end product. Gold, you can't see it on the slide, but there's pearls around her mouth as well. Gold being a natural resource in Africa and very Egyptian. Um, just my connection to Africa, that's all it is. Not saying I'm Egyptian, but that's me just saying my, I have a connection to Africa. And this is the um, process of King Queen Fly. And I'm, of course, I'm highlighting the value of breast, vulva. And the back of it is um, the Christian flower. I wanted to um, glaze it like it's almost a pope's robe over her. Um, this is like when Roe v. Wade was coming out. We have no separation of church and state, I don't believe, at this moment. So um, I was saying that she's blanketed with some other choices that are probably not hers. But also, this is the Christian flower. And on the inside of that Christian flower, it had five um, little prongs. So the five for me, my children, as well. So I got to go to, I got the partner, or the Penland partnership, and I got to go there, and I took a uh, workshop called Skeleton Skins, Nets, and Knots, where we used reed and uh, lashing, and we used, the lashing was with uh, thread with wax around it. So this was the begin of it, beginning of it. Um, everybody was making all these organic forms, but I was just thinking while I was there, um, man, the Kardashians, because we had no TV. And I was, I don't know why Kim Kardashian was on my mind, but she was. And I was just thinking like, wow, she has such a, she's using her body as an accessory. So I'm gonna make one even bigger, um, but using natural materials. And we were in this natural beauty, beautiful place. And I was like, I'm just gonna make this unrealistic. Um, but, and so this is when I started putting pig intestines on there. Pig intestines was part of the uh, skins. She taught us how to uh, line draw with reed as well. And so this is the, um, the spine. And the suspenders, I was going to use, because I was in the textiles building, I was going to use cloth, but then I was like, why would I do that? This is, I, I mean, cloth can be natural, but I was like, I'm going to just use paper. Go along, I'm making, re out of read, let's keep it going. 
And also the light switch, again, I would get stuff thrown at me left and right. Uh, Shane was like, here, you can have this. If you want to do something with it, <laughs> of course I do. I have something perfect. And I want to continue, um, I wanted to make a dress for myself out of this intestines. This material is absolutely beautiful. Um, so I started with this dress form, but it started cracking a little bit. So I started over again and installed a zipper in it just so I could take it on and off. And of course, because of Tony's class, I'm obsessed with ruffs now, so I had to make a ruff for it. For that status, that class, that status, again, I'm making something out of pig intestines, something that we would throw away and trying to give it value. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Well, I guess thank you everybody for coming. Do I just kick everybody out now? Is that what I, what I, what I do? Just kick them out? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm developing a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to see you wearing that around. It's not a question. But that photo of you wearing it was amazing. Thank you, Eli. <laughs> uh, what's, what's next for you? Um, well, currently I'm about to be in a show at Butter. So if anybody is aware of what Butter is, it's um, Black Artists in the Midwest and it's located in Indianapolis. So I'm gonna be in that art fair at the um, Stutz building. Um, just trying to create, continue to doing what I, I have been doing. Um, that's all I, I, I want to go to residencies. I just wanna drag my kids all over the world and have them be exposed to things that I'm talking about that I, yeah. That's what I want to do. Do you have a gallery right now? Oh, yes. I am in a gallery right now. I'm sponsored by Hera Gallery that's in Rhode Island. Um, so if you go there, you can check my page out. Yeah, so they sponsored me for this year as well. Do you want to just say a little bit about the performative aspect of your work? Like what, what's important about that? Sure. Um, I think that seeing me in the things is very important because just hanging there, it doesn't really tell the whole story. So me going through the grocery store, me actually putting it at work and exposing it, like I said, what it is, makes it very important. Um, as far as that I really wanted it to be this unnatural um, accessory in a natural setting. So yeah, it is very important that I um, do wear these things and that I do perform them. They're not just sitting in a gallery. Desi, did you have any reactions when you were in the grocery store with that gear on? You know, a lot of people didn't say too much. I got a lot of stares, but I got more women, not men. Women are just like, oh, dear, I love your hat. It just reminds me of, you know, the olden days. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's good. That's what I was going for. So I achieved it. So the reaction was great because it did what it was supposed to do. or are there times you're working through something and it's... Because you talk about the body, you talk about your connection to the earthwork tone, mm -hmm. and then everything relates to all this autobiographical stuff. Right. But are there times you jump out of the autobiographical about something else, something outside of you? I 
I'm sure, but I'm, maybe I'm not verbalizing it or knowing it. I'm sure there is. A big reason, I know when I was in high school and before I got to college, there was only one clay body that you did use. And so now I had um, exposure to others. And there's like this relationship that I have with clay that goes beyond just uh, liking it. There's time, we've spent time together, we've developed a relationship together. So to have the opportunity to have it the same, um, it looks like me, people like things that look like them, that's just what it is. So now I'm seeing a reflection of myself. So I don't know if it's outside of me, maybe it's outside of me in the sense that I'm looking at my children as well, um, but that's just an extension of me, right? So, yes. I don't really know how to form this as a question, but um, so, uh, you know, looking at your statement, the first thing you say is I'm a black biracial woman. Yes. You also mentioned that you're going to be part of Butter. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think what my question is about is, um, so everybody in here is white for the most part. Okay. <laughs> we have a couple people of color. I'm just wondering if... Um, this is the environment that you're producing this work in, but it's been shared other places, mm -hmm. maybe where um, there are more people of color or black people. Mm -hmm. And if you're having different conversations there, and if there's conversations you wish that I have. have. No, I don't think anybody's talking, asking you any questions about that right now. Right, right, right. Nobody, nobody's saying anything about that. But it's a big part of your work, and it's Sh huge. Evident. Yeah. It's very evident whether I read that or not. It's still the first thing that you you say. So I'm just, I guess I'm wondering, are you having other conversations elsewhere? Because I think that's critical to your work. Sure. Do you wish that, I that we could be having those conversations here? Yes, yes and yes. That's uh, so loaded. Um, but good, good. It's a good loaded question. Black biracial. Um, I identify that as that because, of course, I was in the 80s. And um, when I was younger, when the census came out, you wrote down what you were, there was no other. You were black or you were white. And the historical part in this country, one drop rule, right? So I, I am black, but I have a white mother. So, and I can't dismiss her. She is here, she, I come from her. So um, that's why I identify as black biracial. My experiences in this world have been as a black woman. So that's what do I wish that I had more conversations? Yes, but I think it's hard for people to have conversations if they haven't been through it and that's not their day to day. I, I, I don't know how I, I say enough, I, I guess, but yes, do I wish I had more conversations? Yes. When I went to Penland, uh, Delita Martin was there that came to school here and so the black women of uh, print they had a residency there, so they got to come through my studio as well, and I got to talk to them. Um, of course, there is other black women there that I got to speak with, but as far as this campus goes, no. But thank you, it's a good question. All right. Do I wrap this up? Is this my job? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys for coming. Really, thank you, thank you. And listen to me talk. There's a closing reception. My reception is next Thursday. Seven. Yeah, it's two weeks. Oh, thank God, September. the one after. I am so sorry. Butter has one next week, and I'm just like everywhere. <laughs> so yes, the 7th at 5 to 7. Please come. My family's going to be here. All my kids will be here in one place. It's going to be so exciting. I can't You're wait. Celebrities at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think they are the best people on this planet. But yeah, so come by. And I don't know we're going to have we're not going to have chitlins. <laughs> I promise. <laughs>
No, it's further than that. So at night, because I would leave the studio, and I was in the textile studio. Well, all the studios are off, right? And so I would have to walk at night with my flashlight. And it's and not that you're scared of. Phone flashlight is like not even a non No, no. <laughs> you think, I mean, people would have them on their hats, you know. Um, but I was just scared of animals, because I'm scared of animals, period. And the ones out there are wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, please, God, don't let me. Yeah. One guy drove by and he's like, did you see that animal? I'm like, don't say that, I'm walking. He didn't even ask to give me a ride. I'm just like, stop. Not cool. I know, yeah. Good luck. <laughs>